Anyway, I was there. What's your day been like today? How's training been? Yeah, training was right. I had a sparring day today. Um, yeah, it was all right. I literally just got in. I had a couple one to ones as well this evening. And that's about it. Tomorrow morning, same again. Got pads in the morning. Yeah. Um, and do something in the evening. Yeah, probably. Yeah, man. What's the sort of what's a normal week look like for you in terms of what your work life balance is like? Um, like so you were I, saying, doing the personal training today as well as obviously training yourself. Yeah, I block out most mornings, um, and then I'll go train myself. Obviously, like say like from ten until like twelve, and I get back to my area. Then I start um, doing a couple one to ones. And then after that, I'll go back into training again most of the time and finish the evening training. Sometimes it like chopping changes where I'll do um where I'll do it the other way around. I'll probably like um train again and then train someone else like today later on to finish off my day that way. But it's like five days a week I just do the same thing. Saturdays um in camp most of the time, I will do um, what I do. I'd train people earlier on, then the rest of the day would be like training for me on the weekend, yeah. So that's yeah. like going most of the time, yeah. <clears throat> how many how many clients do you normally take at once uh, take on at once, if you don't mind me asking? Um so right now it's funny because I've actually said I'm not taking anymore because I can't I don't want to be overloaded. I can say I wanna do like say I do like 15 hours a week. You know what I mean? So that could even be the same client doing more than one session a week, but I just want to stick it to that 15, 20 at most. Or again, 20 will be like, I'll be too busy, kind of be too busy, but it's good to be too busy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad problem to have, like, is it? <laughs> but then it's just, then sometimes I feel like if I'm too busy, occupied somewhere else, I'm not putting my all into what I love doing. And that's obviously fighting. Do you know what I mean? I hate coming home. And saying, oh, that shit training session today. Oh, I'm tired, all this crap. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm overworking or something like that. So just, I like having that little balance. <clears throat> How do you know when you're sort of putting too much into one and not the other? Yeah, I just think mainly like when I say, say for example, like what I just used, um, just that like being run down, struggling to wake up, then having a shit training session because you're tired, then have to rush back, you're tired. But again, we're always tired, you know what I mean? It's just hard work, you know what I mean? It has to be done. But it's, when you feel like you're, when I feel like my, how can I put it, my training's dipping, I'm not performing as well, that's when I feel like, yeah, I've got to cut something out. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like there's a line there, isn't it? Because obviously you want to push yourself, but you don't want to burn out at the same time as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> How was it? How was work for you? Obviously, with the COVID situation kicking off last year, and that all must have gone well for gyms. And everything went tits up, didn't it? Yeah. No. So I was kind of the last lockdown. I was lucky. Well, I'll take you from the start. Say so the first one, I just started doing online stuff like <clears throat> everyone else did. You know what I mean? Then when they restricted it, let the restrictions down a little bit, I um, started taking my like pad sessions outside again, which I've done anyway. Like a lot of people are confused. Um, worried about doing adapting when I first started doing like one-to-ones and stuff I was always outside anyway do you know what I mean so I was I was I had equipment I was prepared for it so it didn't really affect me as much and then um the second lockdown um my gym I'm not going to say where <laughs> <laughs> I had I had like my studio gym I had keys for it in it so like yeah <laughs> I was sneaking in sneaking out breaking the rules a little bit, but obviously it needed to be done. Some people didn't want to train outside. It was freezing cold. You know what I mean? What else yeah. am I going to do? <laughs> 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 yeah. How are, you, how are you dealing with the whole situation yourself, man? I'm mad, you know, like, I like the experience. It's once, in a, it's once in a lifetime experience. You know what I mean? To say, yeah, it was crazy. Like, obviously, I'm from London. I went down to Piccadilly Circus. It's always ram, and I saw the ghost town. You know what I mean? You see the stuff in films. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, this is just a sick experience. And then it gets long. Like, to be honest, I don't, I'm, I ain't that fussed about it. I'm still doing my one-to-ones. I'm still training. The only thing I haven't done is fight. 
that's annoying and I haven't traveled. Other than that, I'd be sweet. <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? I do need a fight though. It's been a bit too long now. Yeah. yeah. I remember like going out, uh, I think it was like cycling during the first lockdown and just being like, just nothing. Like, you're still there, mate. You, bro- you broke up for a second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. How far were you cycling? Oh, not, <laughs> not yeah. far, like over. <laughs> Yeah, pretty casual stuff, mate. Right? Yeah, no, because see, the first lot that I was running, I just did five k's. I don't usually run. I, I usually prefer to swim for my cardio and stuff. And then, say like a month back, I bought a bike. Talk about late. I only just done it, but I done a ninety-five k ride that not last weekend, the weekend after. And I'm like, why didn't I do this in the last lot? That not been good, but yeah, I done it anyway. Mm. Do you do a lot of swimming for your cardio? Mainly, yeah, I prefer it. I feel like it's good for the body, that like, all over, and it's really good for the lungs as well. It's quite low impact as well, I think, isn't it? That's, yeah, so I mean, like, if there's any like niggles, injuries, for some reason, it feels like that water just helps it, like. Yes, yeah. man. Like, I think <laughs> I'm coming back from a grappling session, feeling all beat up, and that knee was feeling like it popped or something. Went um, for a swim straight after. I come out like wow, it's just like I feel new. <laughs> it's crazy. Man. Yeah, so I've always swam. I, I used to compete swimming as well when I was younger. So mm. I like, yeah. Obviously, you're like you're big into like the fitness aspect as well, being like a personal trainer and stuff. Yeah. But um, what what came first for you? Was it the MMA or was it the fitness? Like getting into the sport? No, nah, so um, I how do I put it? I think. I was doing, I was lifting weights in the gym and I started like a little bit of boxing classes and I said I was going to do MMA. And then I think, what happened? I started competing in MMA like, or training MMA seriously. And then halfway through it, oh yes, I remember now. So like, I remember I had a, in one of my jujitsu comps, I got a knee injury. Then I had to have surgery. So um, when I was out with the surgeon, um, the, re- the rehab time, I start, started doing the PT course, the personal training course. So yes, yeah, so I started, but I was always into fitness, you know what I mean? Like even when I was growing up, I done sports science, um, studied that as I was growing up, uh, took P extra for GCSE. So I've always been on that side. When I was young, I played football, done Taekwondo. That's kind of how I got into the um, MMA. So, yeah. Mm. How did you first hear about it? So you started off with boxing. Is that something you heard, like, while you were boxing? Oh, see, I didn't, when I mean start off boxing, I weren't really boxing. <laughs> I had that. <like, laughs> <laughs> I weren't really, I went to, like, one session with my um, my uncle. He, he started boxing, like, randomly. Then, um, yeah, I went down there with him. Peacock Gym. So you might have heard of it. Big one in East London. A lot of fighters come out of there. Went down there. And then, um, but I always wanted to do MMA because I, I, like I said, I've done Taekwondo, so I liked kicking. I, and I thought I was too old to start boxing to get somewhere. I watched MMA. I, I just watched, I always used to watch, um, what was it, Cage Rage, used to come on Sky Sports back in the day. And um, yeah, obviously UFC, I was always watching all that stuff in it. And I was like, I can do this, I can do this. Mm. And then I think when I, I told my uncle I want to do it. And he was like, yeah, there's a guy in this gym that's doing MMA now. Obviously I went down there and checked it out. Cool guy in that, but like, it wasn't what I was after. I wanted like proper class, like proper what I'm doing now. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was more like a PT session, hitting dummies on the floor. I don't like, like that, but it was like I said, I'm not gonna, it wasn't bad. Like it's really good for the condition and stuff like that. But yeah, that's how I kind of got into it all. Yeah. You're training at GB top team now, aren't you? is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. How did you start there? Um, it started with, so I was at Fight Zone. Well, I, I still say I'm part of them as well. But I was at Fight Zone and then my head coach there, Stuart Austin, was um, fighting at Titan. And he was like, yeah, come over to Titan. And then I was like, um, yeah, I'll come over to Titan. Went over to Titan, then the height, the level of fighters were just like more on the level of what I was at at the time. So it was a good choice. Then obviously made a connection with Brad, 
um, and the rest of the team. And then um, Brad said he just decided to like part ways. So I think I had a fight booked that the week before that happened. And I was like, yo, Brad, we still need to, to work. And then I remember I was still kind of in between, but when I was going back to Titan, there was literally no one my weight. It's all heavyweights, light heavyweights, maybe middleweights there. And there's me, <laughs> bantamweight, do you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, I've got to see where the rest of the boys are and just start with the team that way. But we all met down at Titan, yeah. 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 What's the atmosphere like at uh, top team? Ah, it's the best, man. Like, just good vibes. I can say the same thing every day. Like, yeah. Even today, I'm just passing around after sparring. Like, you know, it's so cool. I was chatting to uh, Nikita Bagley yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was with him today. Yeah, yeah is he someone to get rounds in with? Like, yeah, I got rounds in. Uh, we've done a boxing round today, yeah, this morning. Yeah, second round was with him this morning. Yeah, man. Um, I ain't seen like we've been crossing paths that like, missing each other loads in the last couple of weeks. I've been doing pads and he's doing his pads somewhere, then I come in. So, yeah, so it was good to catch up with him today. Mm. Must be good as well having someone as experienced as uh, Brad Pickett in your corner as well. Yeah, no, nah, trust me. Like, and I feel like that also strikes fear in the other opponents. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't even done nothing yet. And then... <laughs> it's like, look it's look who ball. I've got. Yeah. <laughs> look who I've got. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, trust me, man. But again, like, it's like that for the... With the whole team, I can say that, because there's Ash as well, Ash Grimshaw. There's uh, Nathaniel Wood. There's Mike, who I have in my corner a couple of times as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just a number of people, man. Everyone behind it, just it's just a great team. Yeah, looking uh, obviously you've gone pro now, but looking back on your amateur career, what was one of the biggest highlights of your amateur career for you? Um, I'd say. My first fight, 2016, after like when I come back from my surgery, man, um, that's kind of feel like when I actually started taking it more serious. So then I say, um, was that the injury you did in jujitsu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because I actually took a fight before that, the week before my surgery. I don't know if you've seen that one. I hate that. I can't. If I'd won the fight, I'd say I had the fight. So I can't lie and say I haven't actually had the fight. Do you know what I mean? This was this was 2014. And I was literally, this is mad. I was meant to be watching one of my um my other teammates, um, Lewis Foon, um, fight. And then on the day or the day before, he was my, my coach at the time was like, yo, sell your ticket. Um, you're fighting. I was like, wow. <laughs> Six months. I was like, oh, what? Um, but in my head, like, as a guy, you're like, I can't back down. I have to say, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, cool. I was shitting it. I've done it. <laughs> Went there. Had a good, like, um, first first round, first few minutes. And then got into positions I just had no idea of. I haven't been in these positions before, or even in training. Do you know what I mean? I literally what position was it? And you're like, I, I was in a triangle, yeah. But, like, um, I pushed it. I think I... No. I was, I think he went for a takedown. I sprawled on him, but like I kept my legs too close to him. So then he managed to pull guard. Then he got me in a triangle. So instead of trying to defend the triangle, I was trying to punch my way out of it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I remember like landing a good few shots on him. And I was like, oh, he's going out, he's going out. And then it got too tight. <laughs> and then that was it. But like. I think I remember that one. You, you sprawled really well, didn't you? Like, and yeah, then, yeah. 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 And again, like the whole thing, like, I mean, I had striking in me, but a lot of it, I, I, I didn't even, I've done one wrestling session. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think I just, did I even start jujitsu then? I'm like, yeah, obviously I'd done the comp the week before. Yeah. So I just started that, do you know what I mean? Started trying to get the hang of things. And then I just don't know. I should have said no, man. But it is what it is. I had the experience. I remember correctly. I think you came out with a lot of swagger on the walk for that fight, didn't you? <laughs> Scared, that's why <laughs> you didn't show it. You didn't show it, <laughs> yeah. Then, um, what happened after that? Um, yeah, then I had surgery the week after, innit? Like, literally, the week after that fight, 
And then I was out until 2016. And then the fight then on LFC, that was that my main highlight, man. Yeah. 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 Are you, are you keen to be more active going forward in your career? We said about like injuries in your past and stuff. Yeah, man. Like last year, I was like, yeah, I want three fights. And then this shit happened. Do you know what I mean? I felt mm. so good. After my life, I was like, yeah, I feel good, man. Do you know what I mean? And then all this just happened. I want to fight. Like, I need to fight. I want to fight twice this year. But I don't know what's going to happen. It's mad. I just want to be, I do need to be more active. Yeah. Have you seen anything yeah. coming up on the horizon? Any fights been offered or anything like that? No. Um, well, say tell her, like my um management messaged me maybe early March, end of February. Um Elite <clears throat> Elite MMA. They must have said um they are said they said that Cage Warriors are looking for opponents. Um they could put my name forward, or they said, Do you want to wait for Bellator again? even if it's like at the end of the year. And I said, yeah, let's do that. So, but other than that, I've not heard anything. Just been... wait for Bella to, or I would. Or... Yeah, I would personally. I don't know. Just, just how the way my mind works. I'm, I'm a fan of MMA as well. And I just see like, that was the best experience of my life. And I always kind of wanted to get to that, um, to that level. I'm not knocking cage or in the slightest, but, um, I just feel where, um, Bellator is like the second biggest promotion in the world in my eyes, so that's where I want. That's where I want to be. Yes, yeah. in and amongst those guys. Yeah. What did you obviously? What did you take away from that loss on your on your pro debut? Uh, mainly, like I said, straight away I knew my mistake. If I can't remember if you guys could hear my corner saying keep the distance, don't rush in, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I think I landed two shots and completely forgot about it. Just went, ah, I rushed in. But as I've rushed in, I've got probably a meter away from him and said, shit, but if you're going to shoot, you have to shoot full, like, full-heartedly. You can't go into a shot half-hearted. So I've gone for it and I've like, told myself, no, I shouldn't be doing this. So I've said no as I'm doing it. You could even hear me moan at myself. So I've stopped, I've got to about here against the cage and then um, I've slowed down. So as I've slowed down, I've like tried to bring myself up, but I've still connected with him. And then I'm like, crap, and I'm trying to get off him, innit? And I'm like, oh. So I'm now frustrated with myself for what I've done and I've given him another opportunity. So that's the main thing, I'm like, just, I say IQ, sticking to the game plan and just being a bit more, way more composed, man literally the composure because I literally because I just lost that do you know what I mean so I have been working on little things that like when I've got someone like up against the fence not jumping in just like holding them while picking my shots again you know that's what I was meant to do I train it but I can't it's just annoying man <laughs> I think that's just something you gain from experience though is that trust me exactly that exactly that yeah that uh, that in your amateur career, that illegal knee you had from was it was it Harry Shaw? I think it was. Yeah. What happened there? If you don't mind me asking, because it looked like you wanted the fight to continue, so I was, I I was a bit confused. Did, but, um, I think if it was pro, they would have they would have continued it, but um, they couldn't stop the bleeding, so they said, "Yeah, we're gonna um, we have to stop it." But that fight, like, it, it, I think it wasn't meant to be what it was. Like, I think it was meant to be a lot easier. And then we were matched up so well. Like, I'd love to, like, I, I always say, I go, that so far, I'd say he was my hardest, he was going to be my hardest opponent. Like, he was good, man. Like, his striking's good. I like to strike as well. And then, um, no, it, it was good. It was, it, the fight was going well. I don't know, I don't know what could have happened, man. Do you get more psyched up if you know you're coming in against a tough opponent? I didn't, like I said, I didn't know until, until like we touched gloves, I was like, oh shit, like I can tell like straight away, I was like, oh, the stance ain't like wild or I was oh, like, oh, so hey. it weren't like still the, till the fight started that you, you knew. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it was just that like, boom. I was like, okay, like <laughs> I think I knew I had a tough opponent in the fight, one of my fights before on UCM and no, WCMMA for a title. And again, my last one, uh, the pro debut. 
I knew they were going to be tough. But yeah, the Harry show, I was blind, man. Like, literally, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel, yeah. You don't mind me saying as well, for um, someone who's quite early on in their career, if you don't mind me saying, you've, like, I think you've built up quite a, like, a decent following on social media. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man. I've been a bit... Um, I used to be funny. I, I used to do stuff on Instagram, like crazy stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I don't know. Like, even in the last lockdown, I was... I have like two different, like, what can I say? Personalities, like behind the camera, I can do wild stuff. Then you see me, I could be just very calm and like chilled. But like, that's, that could be part of it. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I do some crazy stuff sometimes. It just entertains, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I feel up on following from that. Obviously some people are like interested in the fighting and that. Um, all comes hand in hand, you know. You gotta like, you gotta have something about you. Do you know what I mean? To get to get like somewhere. So yeah, I guess that's where the following comes from as well. I'm not just yeah, but 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 I got like a personality as well. Yeah, I was gonna ask what your tips are for, like for other fighters on building up their sort of on the building up their following. But like you yeah. said, do you think it's just about just being yourself? Yeah, yeah. I was just myself, man. Be funny, and I inter I do interact as well. Like I get some messages from some randoms and then like they become interested in following me. Then they tell their friends and then, then I'm next one, I'm like, oh, I've got 10 people there. And one guy was like, oh, I don't just want to be a fan, man. I want to be a friend. I was like, oh, cool, man. But I, I, I respond, you know what I mean? Obviously I respond to who I can respond to, but. What are the messages like? What do they open up with? <laughs> there, are, there are some crazy ones. There's some like, um, like the, the funniest one was, yeah, I don't just want to be a fan. I want to be your friend. That was a funny one. <laughs> and they even ended up emailing me as well. I was like, oh man. Then um, just other stuff, like stuff saying that like, guys are like, oh man, I really, really like your style. You're really cool, man. And just, just normal stuff like that, man. No girl sliding in my DMs though. <clears throat> <laughs> Not enough, I have to say. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> What's your... Uh... What's your what's your goal? Like, what's next for you? Then, what's your what's your goal? How like how far do you want to go? I know you said you're about fighting in Bellator, uh, yeah. possibly at the end of the year. But yeah. how far do you want to go in the sport? Um, to the top, I'm gonna always say I just wanna go not as far as I can. I can go to the top if I just keep on working and just improving and just stop the stupid mistakes. You know what I mean? I know I'm better than like a lot of people out there. Do you know what I mean? So. I just want to go right to the top, as in whether it's in Bellator, UFC, even Cage Warriors, you know what I mean? Or one championship. I'd love to fight over in, in Asia. I love one championship as well. So <clears throat> I just want to go as far as I can take it, travel with it, because um, I enjoy it, man. That's what I love to do. Yeah. What do you like about one? Um, The production. I, I mean, I don't know what's what's behind the scenes, but what I can see, the production, I love the walkout, it's sick. Uh, the main card thing they do, just bef the ceremony before, I think that's so sick. And I haven't been to Asia, but I love Asia, you know what I mean? And yeah, I just think I just love to, to fight over there. What do you make of their, uh, they don't uh, like cut water weight, do they, the same as? That's the one thing I don't really like, because I don't trust it, do you know what I mean? Like, really? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like I'm so used to, like, if I blow up, so say I, I don't cut my water weight, then I blow up. I'm not going to get bigger than I am now. And I can stand up and show me I'm not that big, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas these other guys are probably, like, not cutting water and then they're flipping machines. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, all that size thing. Can you sort of say the same size then? Yeah. I think <laughs> I, I don't really change. And then people say, oh, you're massive for bantamweight. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. But I haven't really, nothing's changed. I've, I've got like a good um, physique, if I can say, yeah. But those other, I've seen some of these flipping beasts over there. I'm like, how are you fighting at this? We are massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be a fucking lightweight. That's what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Have you never struggled getting down to the weight then with your diet and that? No, not at all. I actually feel like I can make flyweight, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I look too skinny. I like having a bit of that. 
<laughs> what's your what's your favorite post fight meal? Meal. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm loving five guys at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> yeah. I like um, five guys, mate. Yeah. I like five guys. Um what else can I say? Yeah, I'd say um, what's that? Busabi Thai. I love that place as well. Thai food. Yeah, they're my favorite. So I can think of right now, but I do just like um basic Caribbean food and what I have at home. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really a massive like, person to go out. I love Chinese as well. Mm. So yeah. I like my takeaways, man. Yeah. Pizza. <laughs> pizza's good. My brother's yeah, Domino's not- like <laughs> you are. I- I could eat pizzas loads, but my brother, like, he's like, oh, he never fancies pizza, in it. So I'm like, oh, and my brother, yeah, I live with my brother, in it. So, like, yeah, we obviously, like, choose what we want to eat, and then we kind of have to agree on something, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I could have a pizza, but oh, pizza's lame, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's he like then? Yeah, he's, he's, um, he's like, he kind of like helps with my management as well. Do you know what I mean? He's like, he's, if anyone was at Peloton, they definitely saw him. Like, he was with me the whole the whole time, from check in, weigh ins, weight cut, the whole time. Um, what yeah, aspects does he help you with? with your management? Um, now he's just more like so. I have my management, Elite MMA. He kind of just does like a bit. I can say more promotional stuff and just making sure like every like on the day or the fight week, everything just in order. Like, know the person that's there. Can I, can, is that a mentor, can I say? Not really a yeah. mentor. PA, kind of like that. Yeah, he just, he's just, he's just like got that kind of side to it. Like, I wasn't really doing it. He'd go down there and sort it for me, do you know what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> Making sure I got like my time, my sauna booked and everything like that. So you help you with social media as well, or is that all you? Nah, that's all me, you know. <laughs> um, no one helps me with that. Like, I actually help him with that. He's yeah. like, he's rubbish on, in, on social media. Man. I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, yeah, I don't, I just don't think it's for him. He doesn't like being out there like that sometimes. Yeah. 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 No, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, man. Good chat, you, like, man. You train as well, though, or no? Nah? Uh, I, I don't train, no. No. Nah? Just watching it. Uh, I do a little bit of jiu-jitsu, but I'm mainly just a fan. Yeah, you're not gonna well, yeah. <laughs> chew it any further. Uh, there's not. There's, to be fair, there's not really any uh, any gyms near me. To be fair, like I've lived proper out in the sticks. Yeah, and it's a it's a it's a trek as it is just to get to like nearest jujitsu gym. Oh, swear down. How long does it take you? Forty five minutes. Oh, I swear. But that's not bad. I travel an hour and a half every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too too fair, man. But yeah. No, it's that like full-time job as well. It's just... Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear that, man. But yeah, I'm just a... Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm a fan, man. Yeah, oh, wicked, man. I, I, like, I like watching the fights and I like chatting to you guys. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. Did you know I was doing the same stuff in the first lockdown as well? Yeah, I, I, was, I was watching a couple of your uh, your Insta interviews yeah, earlier. Yeah, I've yeah, done a few. So, yeah, because I'm, like I said, I'm a fan as well, you know what I mean? I'm a fan. I just enjoy doing what... what I like watching and stuff, so yeah, it's all good, man. You like, you like, uh, like you see, you chat some fighters. I swear, uh, I swear if some of them say they're just, they're not, they don't really watch it themselves. If you know what I mean, they're just like they like they like doing it, obviously, but they're yeah. just not interested in watching fights. I can't imagine that, you know, like I actually sometimes use it for revision in a way. Do you know what I mean? And I feel I've even noticed sometimes when I'm not watching it as much, I'm not performing as much in in training. I think that's crazy. But I'm like a visual learner, I think. So I'm also learning from from watching. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I find it crazy when they say, yeah, I don't watch. I don't really watch it. But I guess sometimes you want to get somewhere out of your comfort zone or somewhere else because you're always in it. So in that sense, I can understand. Yeah. Do you watch tapes of your opponents before their fights? No, not really. I probably watch it once, but I feel like sometimes I should watch it more. But then I think I'll, I'll have them in my head too much. Do you know what I mean? So, like, for example, mm. the Harry Shaw guy, I couldn't find nothing of him, but I wish I could. <laughs> but I would have known that he's, like, a, how um, he's striking and stuff. 
I literally had nothing. Like I didn't know if he could, if he was a grappler, strike. I literally went in there, boom, found out. Yeah. But it's also good for experience as well, so you can just go in there and adapt. Yeah, and I think like a lot of guys like to properly break their opponents down, don't they? But some people just like don't like yeah. watching anything at all. They use they leave it for the uh, coaches to do. Do you know what I mean? Or their teammates, which I done that with my last opponent, management that like, sorted that. Um, then like Brad, Ash, I think Mike, Jose, all my coaches were just all looking, looking at my last opponent. I was like, yeah, keep it standing. I was like, yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the next one I'm shooting for flipping takedowns. Yeah. <laughs> What's your relationship with your uh, coaches like? Do you have a lot of trust in them? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, 100%. 100%. We've got a bit of banter going on at the moment. Bragging rights and football teams and that he supports um Tottenham, I support Arsenal. <laughs> We're both doing bad, but it's just the little rivalry yeah. we have. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, uh, I appreciate you coming on for a chat, man. Nice one, bro. Yeah. yeah no. All the best. You too, man. I'm looking forward to your next fight. Yeah, man. Stay tuned, bro. Cheers, man.